everyone. This is the webinar, Set Your HR Processes on Cruise Control. My name is Danielle Gilstrap, and I'm one of your hosts today. I'm the content coordinator here at Laserfish. Your other host is Alyssa Fang, our international marketing associate. You might recognize our names if you attended the first webinar in our series, Overview of the Laserfish Suite. It's part of our series called Webinar Wednesdays. If you didn't attend the first webinar, don't worry. There is no need to have seen the first one to understand what we're doing today. This webinar is specifically for people in the Human Resources Department. But if you do want to watch that first general overview webinar, you can find the recording on our YouTube page. Let's go ahead and get moving with this one, though. First off, I'd just like to thank you for coming. We know your time is really valuable, and helping you save time is going to be one of the main topics we're covering, because we're going to discuss how you can use Laserfish to help make your HR processes more efficient. I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to today's presenter, Matt from our Toronto office, who's going to show you what Laserfish can do. Thank you. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm an account manager uh, here in Toronto, and I'm going to be taking you through our HR overview process, as well as taking a look at uh, some general laser fish features. Uh, but before I begin, I just want to um, introduce uh, Tanya. I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Metropolis. I'm a pre-sales engineer in our Virginia office. Thanks. Uh, so Tanya will be available for uh, question and answers at the end of the presentation. Um, so just a few housekeeping. Um, the game will be at the end, so if you have any questions, feel free to write them out, um, and then we will uh, go through a list of Q&A at the end of the, the webinar. If there's anything that we can't uh, provide an answer to, we will definitely follow up. Uh, the webinar today will be recorded and available, so uh, for those of you who could not attend or if you have a colleague that couldn't attend, uh, we will be able to provide a link to this webinar so that they can uh, take a look at our HR process. Um, we would recommend that you view the demo in full screen. There should be an arrow at the top right of your um, display. If uh, you're having any difficulties with that, please feel free to reach out to us. So on our agenda today, I'm going to be going through a bit of a history into Laserfish. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with our organization, um, we'll be going through the repository. So as I mentioned, just a few general features. Um, and a look at the user interface, and then we'll be diving right into our onboarding process. Um, so one of the reasons why we've incorporated HR into our webinar series is because everyone has been through this process, um, you know, to some degree, whether you're involved in the recruiting or you've been recruited. Um, it's a very um, open uh, process that can be applied to almost anything within your organization. Um, and then finally, we'll end our, our webinar with question and answers. So just a little bit of a background into Laserfish. We're actually headquartered in Long Beach, California, um, but we do have off quite a few offices around the world. We've launched in 1987, so we do have a lot of experience in the document management space. And uh, to date, we have about 36,000 organizations using Laserfish and about 5 million daily users. Um, so we do have a lot of experience in document management, and we can handle a number of different business processes. So today's solution um, is going to make content a lot more easier to access. Um, we're going to reduce the amount of paper. It's always our goal to help organizations get as paperless as possible. And then we're going to improve the efficiency of your onboarding process or take a look at an example of what we envision to be a very efficient onboarding process. Um, and then finally, we'll take a look at how Laserfish can help you become more compliant. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to dive right into the demonstration. Uh, right now, uh, we're on our Laserfish start page. So there's a number of different ways that you can access Laserfish. Um, one is through our web access, is what we're, uh, the page we're on right now. Laserfish is available on pretty much any browser that you may be using. Um, you can access Laserfish through a desktop-based application, which we call our thick client. Um, or you can access Laserfish through your mobile device. Uh, so the whole objective is that you're always able to access your content no matter where you are. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and log right into the repository. 
Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term repository, it's essentially just your digital filing cabinet where all of your documents are stored um, in one central location based on the security rights that you assign to each individual user. Um, so we've logged right into the repository and we've done so through a full access administrative user, which means that they have access to every folder, every file, um, and even every bit of content within the repository. Now, in real life, of course, we would ensure that uh, those individuals uh, in HR, for instance, would only have access to the HR-related uh, files and folders. Um, so on the left here, you'll notice that we have uh, our folders pane, which is expandable and collapsible, similar to that of Windows. Laserfish actually emulates uh, that Windows environment in order to reduce the amount of training and time it takes for initial users to pick up on our system. Um, to the right, we have our contents pane, and then above that, we have our basic search bar. And we'll get into some of the Laserfish search capabilities a little bit later into the presentation. So you can always store your documents into Laserfish, no matter what document type that you may be dealing with, whether it's PDF, Microsoft Word, Excel, um, Laserfish can store any document type and it'll always open up in its native application. So Microsoft Word documents will always open up in Microsoft Word. Um, and actually for our TIFF-based images, they will always open up in our Laserfish document viewer. So I've gone ahead and opened up one of our, um, our, our applications, which was originally in a, a TIFF-based image, and it's opened up in our Laserfish document viewer. Um, and in doing so, there's a number of different annotations that I can actually apply to that document directly. For instance, I have the ability to highlight uh, essential information. I can redact very sensitive information. And in redacting information, it ultimately um, excludes it from search results as well. So upon the redaction of any sort of field, uh, which we'll get into, um, that ultimately excludes it from any search or access for users that don't have the security rights to read through um, redacted content. I can also leave a sticky note and uh, provide any comments to any of my coll colleagues. To the right, I have my metadata pane. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept of metadata, it's simply information about your document. Um, you can think of it as the inside of one of your favorite novels that has information on the publisher, the publishing date, the location, the author, et cetera. In this situation, we have uh, an employment application. So of course, we've selected a template that uh, embodies that information. So upon selecting an employment application, we've assigned various fields that are associated with that content. So these are all um, fields that we would want to search upon later or we feel are vital information uh, pertaining to that specific document. So we have things like the application ID, the first name, last name, phone number, et cetera. This, this, uh, these fields can either be populated manually or they can be inserted using, uh, automatically using one of our our capture-based tools, which we'll uh, get into a little bit later as well. In addition to our, our metadata, we also have the ability to take a look at our business process pane. Now, what's really neat about the process pane is the ability to locate or uh, take a look at any bottlenecks that might be, um, you know, uh, inhibiting our, our business process. So right now, we can take a look at how long this document has been active, what stage of the business process it's in, and if we have new employees, um, at the bottom, you can see that we have a list of the history of this document's life cycle. So this is an opportunity for new users to take a look at what the next step of this uh, document's uh, life cycle is, if it requires an additional stage of approval, if it requires uh, notification to upper management, um, all of that information can be provided. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and save the changes that I've made to this application right back into the repository. So there's a few ways that uh, we can actually import applications, resumes um, within the repository. One of them would be to, of course, just drag, it, drag and drop that document in automatically. So, um, you know, one example could be 
we have an existing resume already as a digital copy on our, on our desktop. So we want to go ahead and include that in our under consideration folder. As we import that document in, um, we can have the user assign a, a specific template. So we've taken a look at what metadata is. This, would ha this is how it, would, it could be assigned to that specific document. So we're going to go ahead and select the employment, applica employment application. And um, you can see a number of different fields that we have available for the user. Uh, we can mandate those fields if we would like so that users can't import documents unless they fill in the required fields. And this just ensures that that document can be located later um, if those fields are vital uh, for a certain business process, such as the naming of that document. Um, that's also integral information, and we would want to mandate that in order to uh, ensure that everything is standardized in our, in our repository. Um, another way that you could possibly import resumes or um, applications is simply through scanning uh, directly into your repository. So if you have, you know, one resume, one document that you just want to import directly, um, you can do that um, through our simple scan feature here. Um, if you're dealing with copious amounts of documents, so you have a large number of documents that you're looking to scan in, um, you can also do that through one of our batch scanning tools. Our, our batch scanning tool is actually referred to as Quick Field. And uh, Quick Fields allows you to import a number of different a number of documents based on the document type. So as you can see, I selected the HR applications as one of our sessions uh, because we often import um, hundreds upon hundreds of, of applications on a daily basis in this instance. Um, and in doing so, I can simply scan in all of those documents at once. And what Quick Fields is doing is scouring through our folder that we've um, indicated and pulling those applications right out and populating our metadata directly. And this is because each of those documents that we've imported into the system are standardized in the exact same positioning. So all of these documents are um, OCR, and um, which was mentioned in our previous webinar as optical character recognition. So all of the text is actually extracted from that document so that the content can be searched and uh, the relevant information uh, would be applied to the metadata so that information doesn't have to be manually filled in. Uh, when, we're, when we've completed the scan, uh, all we have to do is simply store all those documents into the repository. We can select the destination that we would like them to go into, um, and then Laserfiche will automatically bring those documents directly into the repository. And the final um, method of importing documents or resumes uh, would be through the use of forms, and uh, that will be our next uh, step uh, we'll get into when we discuss the onboarding process. Um, however, the last feature of uh, the Laser Fish repository that I'd like to discuss before moving on is um, our, our search functionality. Now, what's interesting about Laser Fish Search is we've actually designed it uh, to allow um, users to search for documents based on very little information about that specific document. So you can literally search for pretty much anything you know about a document because uh, of, of, of all of the metadata and standardization that has gone into the importing of these documents. So just looking at our basic search alone, you'll notice a number of different options such as the document text. So all of the text that has been extracted, we can search for content. We can search for fields in metadata as we discussed earlier. And we can even search for those annotations. So remember when we applied that sticky note? You can see here that it's detected that sticky note directly, and what Laserfish has done is brought us directly to that searched term. Um, below that search term is what's known as our context hit, um, and that uh, the context hits pane will take you directly to um, that search term. In this case, because that was our only result, it brought us right into the document with the highlighted information. 
Um, however, if there was a number of different results, uh, we would be able to simply select the context hit, which would bring us with, bring us directly to that search term with the, the term highlighted and ready to go. So you can kind of see the, the practicality of that if you're dealing with, you know, a 100-page document and you're looking for a specific quote, um, you simply type in that result, select the context hit that includes your result, and then it'll bring you directly to that page. If the basic search wasn't enough, um, we have a number of different advanced search capabilities as well. Laserfish has uh, over 70 existing pre-configured search results that you can include. Um, you can also search based on um, your own functionality as well. So, uh, for instance, I want to take a look at uh, all of the documents that were brought in over a period of time. Um, so if I wanted to take a look at the resumes that I just brought in within the last couple days, I can simply select the date field and include the last created or modified. And I have a number of different options just based on that alone, which includes uh, before a specific date, after a certain date, or even between two dates. So let's say I want to take a look at all the resumes that I've imported uh, throughout the month. It's going to provide me with a list of every document that has been brought in over the last month. And as you can see here, um, we found the resume that was imported uh, just a few minutes ago. So that kind of concludes a look at the Laserfish um, repository, um, just some basic functionality there. Um, the, next, the next thing I want to get into is uh, more of the onboarding process. So a look at how we can sort of improve that onboarding process for you. But we also want to highlight that, you know, this process can be applied to almost anything within your organization. So we're going to be looking at the importing of a new applicant uh, through an electronic form. So we've taken a look at importing resumes um, by dragging and dropping existing electronic documents. We've taken a look at um, accessing uh, documents through our quick field uh, batch scanning solution. And then now we're going to take a look at importing those resumes and applications through a form, uh, an electronic form solution. So what's interesting about electronic, our, our electronic forms is that um, they are so easy uh, to use. Almost any user can uh, create and publish a form, and there is no limit to how many forms can be published um, within a period of time. Uh, using a simple drag and drop method, anyone can create that form. So based on my selection, I'm going to apply to be an account manager within Laserfish. And this form can be embedded um, onto your website. Uh, it can be sent as a link. Um, it can be for internal purposes, external purposes. It's really up to you. Laserfish has also applied a number of different constraints as well. So taking a look at the phone number, for instance, if I were to forget a digit, Laserfish will not allow me to submit that form. If I were to um, input an incorrect format for the email, for instance, once again, Laserfish will not allow me to continue with that form until I've inputted the correct format. Laserfish has a number of pre-existing fields and templates that you can apply as well. Um, so this uh, address field was actually taken from one of our existing um, one of our existing templates that we've simply dragged and dropped in. Um, 
you also have the ability to upload um, third-party documents as well into these applications. Um, so you can kind of see the practicality here from any standpoint. In this case, we're going to upload one of our existing cover letters onto this application. Um, you, can, you can use uh, this form for almost anything internally as well. Uh, another example could be uploading a picture of one of your receipts for an expense report. Uh, the potential is really endless. Um, using our signature field, we have our applicants can either type in their um, signature or uh, using a stylus pen, they can choose to draw it in themselves. Now, once that form is submitted, um, the user is brought to this splash page, which can be customized as well. Um, so you can uh, possibly add in a save feature, which allows the user to save their, their submitted application. Um, you can have a print button, which will allow them to print that button, or you can bring them right back to your website. So I've submitted that application. The first thing that LaserFiche is gonna do is actually notify me with an email. So you'll see here that LaserFiche workflow, which is basically the brain of the business process automation tool, um, will automatically email um, the relevant party, in this case, Riley Recruiter, with the basic information about that applicant, including their name, phone number, email, um, and a link uh, to that form. So I'm just going to log in as the correct user here, and you'll notice that we'll have um, those tasks available to us. So we've submitted the form. LaserFish um, is going to notify us which tasks uh, are available for us as the recruiter. Um, you'll see here that we have a number of different HR-based related uh, reviews that we have to go through, um, the first one being our application screening for the recent applicant. So Riley Recruiter just access that form that was submitted. Um, now she has the option of approving or rejecting that applicant. And based on her selection and choice, uh, LaserFiche workflow uh, will play out two different scenarios. Um, if they were to reject that applicant, uh, we'll simply email the, the applicant that they were, unfortunately, they were un unsuccessful in their attempts. Um, or we can approve of that and um, workflow will automatically notify our management in order to schedule that next step, which would be an interview. So Riley can't touch or uh, change any of the form's contents. It's a read-only copy, um, but she can leave a comment for management to review later. So upon approving that request, we're going to get another email, and this email would have been to the management, so the HR manager. And that manager is going to receive, uh, once again, that link to the read-only copy of the form. And this notifies them that Riley Recruiter, our, our main recruiter, has approved of this applicant after, after it was screened. So it's now our uh, job to approve of that applicant once more and invite them to um, a interview. So we have a couple of links here, as you can see. One link is um, directing us to the thick client, so that um, desktop-based application. And then the other here is pertaining to the web access. So we're going to go ahead and click on um, the web access portion and log in as Matt Manager. So unless we have the correct credentials, um, LaserFish will not allow us to access that document. So if Matt Manager were, for instance, to accidentally forward that email to um, the wrong individual, they wouldn't be able to access that form through the link. Um, as you can see here, it's opened up in our LaserFish document viewer once more. All of the metadata has been pre-populated based on um, the form that was submitted, so nothing had to be filled in manually. And it's now Matt Manager's job to determine whether or not we're going to pursue this applicant. You can also take a look at the, at the business process once more um, and uh, determine if there was any bottlenecks throughout this entire process, how long it was in duration, how long it took 
our recruiter to approve or reject of this applicant. So after reviewing the application, they've decided that it's successful and they're going to go ahead and hire it. As soon as they change the status in the metadata, they simply save it into the repository and upon doing so, it'll automatically kick off another workflow and this workflow is going to notify the applicant that they've been successful and send them an automatic job offer. So none of that has to be manually uh, written up. Um, everything is automatic based on um, our standard job offer that we've already included in our workflow. Um, it's going to notify our IT uh, to create an account for this individual. It can notify our HR administrator to, you know, uh, start the enrollment process. Uh, it's really up to you and how your HR process um, works on a daily basis. Uh, but this is just one example of how LaserFiche is able to actually automate the onboarding process from start to finish. And um, so we'll actually log back in. So as, uh, as they've approved of that applicant, LaserFish will automatically bring that uh, application directly into the repository under the employee files um, so that there's absolutely no dragging and dropping at this point. Um, everything is done through forms and workflow. Uh, before we continue, I actually just want to show you um, another feature of workflow. Um, LaserFish actually uh, developed um, some new features of workflow, including what's called as a business process library. So I'm going to log into our workflow designer here, and sh or sorry, our, our forms designer here and take a look at creating a new form and new process. So as you can see here, um, you know, we've gone through that, that HR process, but if I wanted to create you know, some, a new process or a new form that pertains to the enrollment process um, or maybe even the offboarding process, let's say, um, I can simply access our business process library, uh, which contains a number of existing processes that we can decide to build off of, that we can decide to create a new process that's similar to, and just really get a bunch of ideas um, of some other processes that other organizations are using. Um, these existing processes are actually developed from existing users that have provided us with this information, um, and this ultimately just allows us to share all of these processes together and help our organizations to grow, um, whether it be by using this process directly or maybe just gaining some uh, new insight into how other organizations are operating for um, certain business processes and how they kind of conduct their information using electronic forms. By simply downloading that process, um, that organization can have the form go active and incorporate uh, that process into their, their operations. Um, finally, the last thing I just want to show is the ability to take a look at various reports and the reporting capabilities of LaserFish. Uh, laser fish forms. So if we were to, to take a look at how many applications are still in process, we can look at our operational or performance dashboard. Now these show us a number of different metrics including how many processes are still or how many applications are still in process, how long they've been in process for, how many users are assigned to specific tasks to screen those applications, um, and then we can also kind of take a look at all of these applications in hindsight, so how long they've taken to finish, uh, what the average duration was, um, and this information can actually help us determine how many uh, recruiters or how many HR staff are assigned to a specific function. Um, the performance dashboard will actually narrow down, um, you know, the amount of time each individual user 
um, has been um, working on approving of applications, let's say, or you know, working on a specific task and just really help determine if there's any bottlenecks or if there's ways to actually improve of that process. So with that, um, that concludes our look at how LaserFish would automate our HR onboarding um, for a new applicant. Uh, what I want to do is uh, handle any questions that have come up throughout the presentation. Um, if there's anything um, you know, that we can reference to help clarify, we'll go through that and um, we'll, uh, we'll ask uh, Tanya for some assistance um, on that process. Uh, so I have received uh, two questions so far, and the first one is regarding the side-by-side -side fields on the job application form, uh, whether that's something in Form 10. And it is something that's actually um, you can create in every version of Forms, uh, but you will need to use CSS to use it. And so we've actually provided the, uh, the code that you have to input into the form in our help files. So if you go to the forms help files online and look up CSS, CSS options, then you will find how to make your field side by side there. Uh, and then the second question that I have is, are there any plans to make the country field in the address field on forms uh, optional instead of required. And right now, uh, you have a couple of ways to do that. You can uh, add single line fields and use that as kind of a broken down address field and then choose to not include the country in, in your um, address that you input on the form. Uh, and then choose which of those criteria you'd like to make required. Um, as far as having that or using that grouped field that Forms has out of the box and optionally leaving country optional, I'm actually checking with our development team right now to see if that's something that's coming up. Um, but if not, then we'll certainly make that a feature request so that you'll see that in the future. Okay. And I guess if there are any other questions, you can chat them to Alyssa, but those are the two that I have right now. Okay, so I've just gotten a question about uh, QuickBooks. Can this application be integrated with our system? And we do have customers who are currently using QuickBooks with LaserFish, so yes, that is possible. Um, okay, and, and let me read this other question before I get it. Um, okay, so our current company currently only utilizes the desktop version. Is everything we went through today available on the desktop version? And yes, um, I'm, so we've uh, basically mimicked the desktop interface in Web Access, and um, we've included all of the functionality in both uh, applications. Okay, the next question, can the applications be pulled into a report and downloaded or exported into Excel? And that is a great question um, because I know that a lot of customers use that feature. Um, and I'm wondering what you mean by applications. I know, okay, so 
For the search features that Matt showed towards the beginning, um, where we used our advanced search and our basic search to look up information about those job applications, those can certainly generate a report. And in that report, you can actually choose which criteria, or sorry, choose which properties of those documents you want to include. So say you perform that search on all of the resumes that were sent in July, then you can choose to include uh, in your Excel report the first name and last name of the applicant, the position that they're applying for, uh, the date that they applied. So really any piece of metadata that you've attached to those resumes, um, as well as system data like uh, date created um, and maybe who, uh, which recruiter is assigned to uh, screening that resume. Okay, and the next question, so I'm fairly new to Laserfiche. How do you access forms? So Forms is an online application, and so uh, it has a um, an additional server associated with it. So you'll have to actually install uh, the Forms product, and then once you've uh, configured it to point to, once you've configured um, the connections properly, then you'll be able to. Uh, access it online. Okay, and let's see. Um, are there any integrations with electronic signature companies like DocuSign? So that is uh, an integration that we offer. We have that with um, DocuSign. Uh, I know that we also have it with Signix. And um, Matt, maybe you can show this on the screen. But DocuSign is an additional option uh, available from our overflow menu in the top right-hand corner, the vertical ellipses. So to get a document signed, all you have to do is select in the repository the document that you want to send out for signature. And then in that overflow menu, you would choose uh, DocuSign, and you can actually um, so, so DocuSign has different templates that accompany it depending on which document type you want to get signed. So you would choose which template is appropriate for that document, and then it will um, apply those fields and then send it out for signature. Okay, let's see. Okay, so... That's what I have right now. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions so far, but we can wait for another couple minutes to give you some time to think of any, um, any final questions you might have. Okay. Can you hide a field based on user task, as in only the first user would see a certain field? Uh, yes, that is definitely possible. So in one business process that we have, oh, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm, there are, there are two applications that this can apply to. Um, so there are the processes that we have in the repository, and then there are the processes that we have in forms. Um, I'm going to choose forms first because using the terminology user task, that's what I assume the question is about. So um, within forms, so we have our business process, and then a set of forms associated with that business process. And because you can have, um, like I said, a set of forms, multiple forms, what fields you choose to display to um, particular users in a task 
those will vary based on the form that you're presenting them, um, which is why we also have in our designers a copy form option because a lot of times uh, you have a user task going to someone maybe screening an application with their review decision attached to it. So that's form one. And then the second form goes to um, maybe someone else in recruiting or, or the manager. And so it's really the same form that you're sending them, but with an additional uh, field for the manager review decision, or maybe you're leaving out the recruiter review decision. Um, so the same form essentially, but plus or minus a couple of fields. Uh, and so we've tried to streamline that configuration for you. Um, and then as far as hiding fields in the repository, so, uh, so this would be metadata fields that we're hiding from particular users. And just like our documents and folders, our metadata fields and templates have security associated with them also, and part of that security is whether or not you are uh, letting those users view the fields at all. Um, and while we're on the topic, you can also make those metadata fields read only to users if you want them just to view the information but not to be able to modify it. Uh, the same goes with forms. So we've sent that um, maybe the applicant to the recruiter, they make their decision, then it goes on to the manager to make his decision. So the recruiter, um, that decision was set to read only so that the manager can only view it and not modify it. So that's another option. Okay, so took a while to answer that one, so we've gotten in a few more questions. Uh, so do the sticky notes added to documents appear when you print the document? That is an option that is available uh, when printing documents with annotations or when uh, exporting documents with annotations. Also, you can choose optionally to burn the annotations uh, to the document so that they will appear once they're outside of the laser fiche system. And I know that that is most commonly used when exporting as PDFs. Uh, you can choose whether or not to leave or to convert, say, a sticky note um, from a laser fee sticky note into a PDF sticky note when, when you export it. Um, but again, that is optional. You don't have to include that if you don't want to. Okay, uh, the next question. How are signatures authenticated for the federal forms? Okay, so I'm trying to uh, make sure I use the correct terminology here. So. The signature and forms is, uh, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Sorry for holding you off for a second. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not going to find this in time to uh, not keep you waiting for a while, but the forms authentication is a, it's the one level, one authentication level. Um, so you are, uh, that what one authentication level comes from accessing the um, the link to that form where you would sign it through your email. So I think maybe one step verification is the, the term I'm looking for. So you've verified yourself by logging into the system uh, and accessing the form that the signature is attached to. Um, and just to put it into perspective, so uh, DocuSign is two-step verification. So that's why we offer the integration with DocuSign in case you want to have that additional uh, verification or authentication level um, associated with that with a signature. Okay, and uh, the next question: Is it possible to pull a drop-down list from a SQL Server table into Forms with the angle of making it easier to change employees 
on a given drop-down list? Uh, the answer to that is yes. So um, one of the out-of-the-box tools, again, in the forms designer, is called a database lookup. And so we have um, a page in the forms designer dedicated to uh, looking into your organization's databases and indicating which table and then which column of data from that table you'd like to pull out and then insert into a field. Um, and there are a couple of ways that you can utilize that. Uh, so using the example that's given in this question, so maybe you want to assign um, the review of a form to a particular employee, so you can include a field on the form that says assign review to, and then you would have a field that looks into your employee information database. It looks up and it pulls out um, all of the employee names from the appropriate column of the database and then fills that field with a drop-down list of all of those names. Uh, and then the person would then choose uh, the appropriate name from that drop-down list. Um, another way that you can use that is uh, to fill fields rather than fill them with drop-down lists. Um, so say you have an applicant and you want to fill their applicant data in a form, so you could input the applicant ID, some sort of unique identifier of that person, and then um, based on that ID, forms would pull back all of the information associated with that applicant from your applicant database, and then fill in their first name, last, ni last name, date of birth, email, um, et cetera, whatever fields you've specified that you want filled. Okay, so again, um, we'll give a couple minutes to see if anyone else has questions. Those are the ones that we have right now. And if you think that um, or if you're looking for more information than I've given on the question that you've already asked, then feel free to ask a clarifying question, too. I'm happy to dig further in if you're looking for more. Okay, I've gotten some information from our development team regarding that address field. Um, so again, so that I explain it more clearly, I think I got, I stumbled over my words before. Um, so we have an address field, and that address field in our forms designer contains multiple components. There's the street name, um, the zip code, uh, the and the country, for example. And if you require the address field, then we're going to require all of those components. And so the request is to um, require, say, just the street and the zip code, but leave country optional. And if that's what you want to do, but use kind of that grouped address field rather than, than splitting them up in your form, then you can use JavaScript to hide the country which will separate it out from that grouping. Um, but I meant, as I mentioned before, you can always include them as separate fields on your form to, to achieve the same thing.
Okay, and someone has asked if we can show how to make a basic application form in the designer that I keep referencing, and Matt has uh, generously agreed to take us through that designer. Um, sure. So actually, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Sure. Um, so we're actually accessing the application that was published that we submitted uh, in the demonstration. Um, as you can see here, um, it's a simple drag and drop uh, function in order to um, edit any fields. Um, you can apply uh, whatever uh, labels that you would like. Um, it's very easy to, to add or delete a field based on existing forms that we have in our business process library, um, or you can create a form from scratch if that's something that you're interested in as well. Um, and, uh, you know, you can either use one of our pre-selected uh, fields on the left, or if you'd like to create your own field as well, um, we can go into a little bit more depth. Did you want to, I don't know if you wanted to touch on that at all, um, Tanya? Sorry, about which part? Going into depth uh, on which part? So if, if they wanted to um, go into a little bit more uh, technical functionality into the development of forms? Yeah, I think actually what might be the most helpful is starting out with a blank form sure. and so people can see us actually dragging and dropping those fields onto it. Okay. Yeah, so what Matt's doing right now is creating, um, you could do the form submission. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so right now he's creating what's called the forms process. And the reason why it's more than just creating a form is because, um, as I said before, you can have a set of forms that's required to achieve a business goal. So. You might have multiple review steps that might require multiple um, forms and then certainly separate user tasks. So those are all comprised in what we call our process. Uh, and so we're taken here to our process diagram, which is where we will map out all of those user steps uh, required to um, fulfill whatever that goal might be. So let's go ahead and take a look at the form creation piece. So in order to go there, um, yeah, if you want to go to the forms part. Okay. Okay, and so to actually build out the form, um, on the left-hand side, we have all of our uh, pre-built fields available. And um, as Matt is doing right now, you just choose whichever field you need included in your form and then drag it onto the canvas here. And associated with each different type of field are a couple of configuration options. Um, and those, and I say configuration options, it could be as simple as just naming the field. Um, everything else is pretty much done for you. So, file upload, even though that's, I guess, a, a bit more technical as far as the back end of that field, all you have to do is name the field and then the person will be able to upload documents to it. Um, and then if you want to, you can uh, kind of make it a bit more complicated and select which file extensions you will accept in that field. You can select um, a maximum file size. So other options are available if you want to use them. Okay, and then um, in addition to actually laying out those fields on the form, um, you can choose how you want the appearance of the form to be. So we have, again, some pre-configured backgrounds available, um, and then you can also create your own and further customize the ones that we have. Um, so certainly you can include your company logo on the form if you want to change the, um, the font, uh, the text colors. There's a lot that you can do here to 
make the form, um, the idea behind is to make the form mimic uh, the format of your existing website. And then also looking at the other tabs available at the top. So uh, we have the CSS and JavaScript tab, which is where I mentioned if you want to make fields appear side by side, you would just include a quick CSS line there. Um, and those examples are in the help files, but it's as simple as indicating which two fields you want to be side by side, and then the command is display um, display inline block. We'll put them together. Uh, so that's CSS, and then um, the idea behind including these options is for people who do know CSS and JavaScript to extend the functionality beyond uh, the um, more straightforward drag and drop interface that we offer. Um, and then lookup rules is, again, where you would configure the, um, the database and it's really just following a, uh, a simple wizard stepping you through the, um, the different steps required in reaching into a database. So uh, we don't have a database hooked up to this form right now, but all you have to do is select your database on your machine select which table you're pulling from, and then choose which column uh, you want the data to go from. And then another option would, at, would, uh, would show asking which field you want that information to go into. Okay, looks like we have a couple other questions. I'm making sure that they, seeing if they're related to this interface here. Okay, so we have a question. Um, currently, users can add as many file uploads as they want to. Is there a way to limit this to only one upload per file upload field? And uh, yes, so I have actually done this on a form before. Um, we limited the number of uploads, in, um, in my case, to 10 uploads uh, per field per user. And there was some JavaScript that went into that. And um, I can see if that's available in the help files. Um, if not, then we can see about getting it up there. Otherwise, we can post it on Laserfiche Answers, uh, which for those who are unfamiliar is kind of our, um, it's our community kind of database of knowledge where people ask questions and then members from Laserfish and the wider Laserfish community will answer. So that's another great place to find the, the CSS and JavaScript codes to extend the form's functionality. People actually copy and paste their code onto that site. Um, another way that you can learn how to use forms and ideas for forms configurations is from the business process library since we have pre-configured processes available there. And the business process library is located on uh, forms version 10.1 and above. And I'm not sure which version we're just displaying here. Um, can you check that? If you have forms and about, okay, 10.1, let's, let's check if this is a high enough iteration of it. So if you go to new process, yeah, there we go, good. Business process library. Okay, so, uh, so again, to reiterate how we got there in case, uh, so we clicked on, actually, yeah, can you close out? So, yeah. Okay, so at the top of Laserfish Forms, we see the three headings, tasks, my reports, and processes. And it is under the processes option, and then you select new process, the idea behind that being that we're going to um, upload this process from the business process library. And Matt, if you don't mind clicking new process again, thank you. 
And then if you look on the right of available templates, then we have a new tab as of 10.1 for business process library with um, all of the uploaded templates in, um, in this window here. Um, on the left-hand side where you see filter templates, that's where you can see all of the processes based on industry or, uh, or category. So you could find a process that's relevant to your organization, and when you select it, you'll view more information uh, regarding what the process, um, what the process enables you to do, and then instructions on how to upload and configure it properly to your environment. And just to uh, add to that, we're always adding new uh, processes, um, so um, if you have any suggestions, uh, feel free to reach out to us as well. Um, these are constructed by our existing users, um, so uh, the basic idea is to share information about how to be more efficient in our operation. Um, and one more note about the um, forms address question. So I got another update from development. Um, they said that the uh, ability to make country selectively optional um, to kind of streamline that process further is actually um, something that they're working on. So uh, they hope to have it out um, in a future release of form. Okay, um, so with that, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and wrap up our, our presentation. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for, for stopping by. Um, if you have any questions that weren't answered uh, throughout the course of our, our demonstration, feel free to reach out. Um, we're more than happy to help provide any clarification. Um, and uh, our next webinar uh, will be available uh, the following week, so every Wednesday. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Um, and in the meantime, as I mentioned, uh, you can reach out to um, anyone within our uh, laser fiche uh, if you have any additional questions. Thanks so much.